Hey, what is going on everybody, and welcome to Fantasia for today. We're going to be jumping into another session of Epic 7. Now today, got a long-awaited video for you guys. Uh, in this account overview, we're going to go over all of my units, PvE and PvP. Uh, if you want the most up-to-date uh, unit builds though, be sure to join my Discord server. Link is going to be in the description down below. Just ping me anytime and I will link to... Um, a screenshot of my unit uh, in at that moment. Um, but yeah, with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and just jump right into this, shall we? Have a lot of units to cover here, uh, so let's go ahead and take a look. First things first, we got a new unit built, and of course, uh, with that summer skin coming out, she's looking fantastic. A imprint here on my Sermia. So I built her on Rage, and you can see the damage is pretty good. Uh, I use her in um, Katie's, uh, and she is my primary DPS. I'm um, going to go through all the substats here, just going to flash them on screen so you can see the quality of gear that is uh, that is on her. Rage is definitely harder to pull off, Daydream Joker for the extra damage, and um, the cooldown reset with her S3. Alright, so moving on we got Holiday Euphine here, I don't really use her, I have used her a couple times in Arena uh, for fun, but she is not on an ideal build. Uh, she just kind of exists. <laughs> she's what we would call a kind of copium unit because why have a chance to dodge and cleanse debuffs when you can just guarantee the cleanse with a high res unit like DJB or ML Cowric, right? Now, one thing I have to say, Snow Crystal getting buffed is fantastic. Uh, I've seen this being used on Shu to a uh, very good success. All right, moving on, we got everyone's favorite, uh, <laughs> favorite... Um, unit in the game, totally not the most hated right now for some reason. Uh, but yeah, here are her stats. Mine's not very good. Uh, she doesn't have to have the most insane stats. As you can see from the substats, very, very uh, mediocre gear, um, to say the least. <laughs> you can see it's very scuffed. Um, but yeah, she gets the job done. She has a bit of resistance because I don't want HP on her, just a bit of resistance to uh, help her resist a few debuffs here and there from random DPS units. Got her on Eubirus' Tooth, unfortunately not maxed, but hey, something we'll slowly work on. I'm not willing to put bottles of knowledge into that thing. Alright, moving on, we got Jacko. I think she's also new from last time. I don't think we had her uh, before, but you know, she's a fairly speedy DPS. Uh, she has quite a bit of damage. She's on pen set, so she does even more damage on her S3 and on her um, S1 and her follow-up attack. She's on portrait for the extra damage to help one-shot guarantee the kill on her S3. She self-attack buffs. She's pretty good. Uh, she's kind of like a, a green Sid, but just the fire version of it. So overall, not too shabby. Uh, moving on, we got my Ken here. Uh, Ken's actually built for some reason, uh, but you know, got him on a penetration set with speed set. He's just kind of chilling here. I, I bring him out for fun sometimes, but not really the most practical unit as of right now. Running him on Sigurd's site so he's a bit more self-sustaining. Other than that though, He's just chilling there. Got Soul Bad Guy here, though. He's also a PvE unit. Now, I used him in, um, what was it called? The Last Advent event. Uh, the Last Advent was, uh, he was pretty good in it, actually. He was, uh, MVP in one of my team comps. So, quite good. Uh, obviously his gear is all leftover scuffed gear. He's not that great. Uh, Sigurd Scythe as well. Could run him in PvE content to some uh, pretty good success. Next up we have Adventure Roz. After his buff, I've been using him quite a bit. Now look at his stats here, he's looking pretty good. Uh, 240 speed is what I have him at. This helmet is really bad, but I can't find something better that has speed and effectiveness and health. Um, but we're, we're working on that. Uh, yeah, he's uh, his barrier that he gives, so most people are building him with more HP nowadays because of the barrier. Uh, I swapped him away from, he used to have a lot more defense, and I swapped him to HP so that his barrier is going to be even more thick. He's on Aureus to help out um, with uh, with tanking. Alright, moving on, we got Fire Cecilia. She's my adamant uh, shield user. Now, she's also a really good PvE unit. I sometimes use her in PvP, you guys see her show up from time to time in my drafts. Um, but she is mostly here for PvE. 
She's not built for PvE, she's built for PvP, but she just happens to work in a bunch of expeditions, like the Dark One, uh, I believe she also works in the, uh, yeah, the Earth One, so that's where I mostly have her at. Uh, but yeah, there's her stats right there, running Adamant Shield on her EE that gives a decreased speed on all enemies as well with the rest too. Right, moving on, uh, Lilius is actually kind of ungeared uh, because I don't use her anymore. So we're going to move on to Kron. Uh Swapped out a couple of his pieces, I think I made him a little slower. And he still has some pretty decent damage going on. He's not a unit I typically draft because most cleavers have uh, strippers. But if you go up against a team that does not have strippers, then you can definitely use Kron to some... Uh, some decent results. Now he's on Aaliyah's knife here. I really want to put him on uh, Dust Devil, but as of right now, I do not have a second Dust Devil at plus 30, so he's using that for now. Uh, he's on the one where he gets increased damage on his S1 because he's on a counter build, so it makes sense. That's the skill he's going to be using the most. All right, next up we got. Um, Actually, I'll show my Kawana right here. She's on a PvE build. She's kind of used uh, uh, in Advent, in the last Advent. I used her there, and pretty pretty decent. I mean, her kit's great. Um, it's just that it's restricted to mono fire, which kind of sucks. So PvE build right there, just kind of leftover gears. Uh, we got Surin right here. So Surin actually, I've kind of... Um, not used her as much as I did previously, but she is very useful as a speed imprint. Um, I think Wander Silk is kind of... Well, they kind of fill different roles, right? You need a Soulburn for Cern to do well. I think that's why people shy away from her and prefer things like Green Sid or Watcher Shuri. Uh, but she can easily snipe down two units uh, with a Soulburn while giving a 14 speed imprint, which Watcher Shuri and... and uh, uh, green Sid cannot do, right? So she gives a higher speed imprint, but she requires a bit more investment into your team comp in order to pull her off. Still a really fun unit, though. Uh, I keep her build ju built just in case. Okay, um, moving on. We got Lytica. <laughs> Lytica here, I don't know. She's kind of on a weird PvE build. She's on like a fun unit build, right? So she's, those are her molas and stuff. Here's her speed, 270. She's on a bunch of leftover gear that I could not put on anyone else as of right now. Um, pretty decent speed stats. I mean, she has a really high base speed, which is why it looks like she's pretty fast, but the gear is not that great. She's on Guiding Light, just in case I want to troll for mock battles, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, dispels an extra debuff on her S2, is what I currently have her at. Alright, moving on, we got Shuri here. Fire Shuri, uh, recent addition as my speed imprint unit, and boy do I love him. Uh, he's on Unity Set, actually, which is pretty... Or, or, sorry, he's not on Unity Set anymore. He used to be on Unity Set. Um, he's currently on just pieces with high speed, I think. Yeah, this is just to give him some more damage. So, unfortunately, I have to take him off Unity to, uh, to make sure his speed was fast enough. 265 is pretty good. Now, he's on Sword of Judgment right now because I'm using him in my Dark uh, Expedition. But normally, he would be on Sashay. So that if you're cleaving and PvP and stuff, uh, you can push up um, your team after you get some kills. But this is for pushing up the team uh, an extra time. You can use your S1 twice with him if you get lucky in PvE. Alright, moving on, we got Samurai Syria here. Now you can see her artifact's not maxed. Uh, the reason for that is because uh, this is my second copy of her artifact. So now that she's being rerun, snagged an extra copy of it, and we're trying to max that out. Uh, in terms of charms, that's all I'm lacking. Charms and gold, as you can probably tell from the top of your screen. So uh, this is, see, as you can see, fully imprinted right there. I got bottles of knowledge saved up for this, but yeah, we're going to try to plus 30 that um, pretty soon, once I get a few more epic artifact charms. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just uh, looking pretty good. I do use her quite a bit in Guild Wars. Um, the uh, the reason I wanted two of these is because I actually use a plus 30 uh, copy of it on my ML Flan um, instead. Okay, moving on, we got Melissa here. Uh, Melissa is rocking a lot of damage, 200 speed on an attack set, somehow. Oh, well, I say somehow, but you can look at the speed substats on these pieces. 
they're not too shabby. Um, but yeah, she's on Candlestick for no reason. I just she's in PVE. I use her in raid. Uh, she's pretty good as a raid unit. And uh, yeah, I have extra damage on her S too. So yeah, pretty much it. PVE unit. Uh, I, I enjoy using her because she's fun. I could build her for PvP, but I just don't have the gear right now. She's pretty hungry for crit chance, actually. All right, next up we got Mercedes. Yes, I finally finally built Mercedes, uh, <laughs> and she's on counter. So this is her gear here: counter immunity. Uh, she is mostly used in the Earth Expedition. However, she is viable in PvP as well. Uh, this is a very troll build. A uh, bit of bulk on her counter so that you know you can magic with friends twice and then she can also counter attack because why not that that almost never happens though because my rng is garbage but yeah magic for friends right here uh fully maxed out all right moving on we got milam uh she's also on a counter set she's on penetration as well now she has hardly any bulk this is a filler kind of build um can use her in Guild Wars, however, outside of that, I don't really... She's not very RTA viable with her bulk here. She'd probably need a bit more defense and a bit more HP for that to be, for that to work. Um, Black Hand the Goddess to round out that crit rate, as you can see, um, to help her out in the early turns. And of course, uh, counter set because I did not want... Uh, because the on speed set, she'd be around 200 speed, so... Might as well go counter for the extra utility at the cost of hardly anything. All right, next up we have Politis. Uh, Politis here is very useful. Mine's on a damage build. Some of you guys have been curious as to see what Politis is like in the current meta. She's really good. Uh, just she's just situational, right? The more bulky units are, the less useful Politis is. Um, Politis is really good as an anti-cleave unit, or you can use her in cleave teams. Uh, some people build her really bulky with a ton of resist and effectiveness, and then they run her on um, Abyssal Crown. I have mine on Book, because if I use her to cleave, she's going to be supplying Book to my uh, teammates, which can help with Soul Burns. All right, next up we got Researcher Carrot. She actually got reworked here. You look at her stats. They're insane. Look at that defense. Um, very proud of my Carrot. She is very useful, and you guys know that I continue, continue to draft her quite often uh, in RTA. Uh, she puts in the work. So as you can see, this is where the defense is coming from. I had this really weird piece that I rolled. So it went all into defense. So it became a new carrot piece. Um, yeah, she's on Etika Scepter because uh, I use her into Bellions. And Bellion being one of my worst nightmares in this game, I needed several counters built to counter her. One of which here is uh, definitely going to be carrot because she can stack burns every time Bellion attacks her. And then you bop her and detonate the burns. So pretty good. Uh, next up we have a KD's user in Guild Wars sometimes, not as much anymore, um, the kind of comp I used her in uh, isn't as viable anymore, it used to be, uh, what was it, a KD's, ML Ken, and A-Roz, and the reason you'd run that is because people had um, FCC with Landy and T-Surins, so that was good into that team, that team's not vi really viable anymore, but um, yeah, a KD's is still built, still got a bit of bulk on her, she's on Rod of Amaryllis to help out her healing, and she has the Effect Resist EE to help her out. Um, her, her speed is purposefully slower so that she goes after everyone goes. And then she can cleanse and heal and all the good stuff that healers do. Speaking of which, um, Tomarin got a rework actually. I started uh, doing more PvE stuff in terms of expeditions, trying to make better teams. So you can see uh, she is way less scuffed than she was before. Um, that said, her chest piece is still pretty garbage, her weapon's still kind of garbage, but I did want a mix of effectiveness and effect resist. The reason being, effect resist helps her obviously resist uh, the bosses, um, not the bosses, but the little um, ads in the um, expeditions from getting reset in like the dark one, for example, a little cannon that uh, increases your skill cooldown. And you also want effectiveness so you can strip buffs uh, from things. I use her in Katie's, I use her in Azimanic. Um, you would technically use her in Golem, but who farms Golem? Uh, <laughs> I use her in the Fire Expedition, I use her in the, um, soon to be used in the uh, Ice Expedition. I use her in the uh, Wyvern Fire Expedition as well. So she is everywhere queen of pve so 
Oh yeah, she's also on uh, Magarajas, so that she can increase her combat readiness. Um, that can be swapped out though, depending on what type of content you're doing. All right, next up we have Luna. Uh, Luna's full PVE gear right now. Uh, by that I mean her artifacts PVE. Um, but she is on speed pen set, so I upgraded her gear and she is looking quite nice. Uh, she is hitting like a truck in Expeditions and I'm very, very happy for that. So there we go. This was an insane piece as well, all that crit chance on this... Uh, this boot right there. Uh, she's on Ancient Sheath because uh, you turn her skills off in Expeditions and just let her go ham with S1, and you turn her skills off because you get combat readiness by using your S1, so you cycle your turns. She's 200 something speed, so she t goes quite a, a, a few times before the bosses take their turn. The more you cycle, the more advantage you take from your unit's defense breaks. All right, so moving on, we got Sigrid. She actually got reworked as well. Got a couple more pieces on her. So as you can see here, uh, free destruction gear for the most part, except this helmet. I randomly got and it rolled very decently. So decided to reforge it and keep it. Um, everything else is kind of uh, the same. Reforge this as well. Um, that's free piece. That that you know typically you'd throw this away, but the effectiveness actually helps bring her up so that she can debuff the wyvern. And I gave her, yep, this pair of boots here with some crit chance so that she can uh, crit the wyvern. Um, overall, she's looking pretty good. She's on speed boot now instead of a attack percent boot. Uh, Daydream Joker, so she actually cycles pretty quick in wyvern. Uh, I can show you some of my other units in a bit. But yeah, she, she does uh, most of the heavy lifting in terms of damage. All right, next up we got Crow and Crow looking pretty good on revenge set here. Defense is a little high. I would definitely trade it for uh, HP if I could, but as of right now, this is just what we are at. Um, but it's fine. It is fine. He has a little bit of resistance to help out against random debuffs, but for the most part, he does his job. Not used as much in RTA, mostly in Guild Wars, but uh, to tank Rimuru's right. So that's why I prefer more HP. You can put him on an HP boot or something as well. It might tank his speed quite a bit, but you could have him survive with over 30k HP against Rimuru's. He's on Aureus to help out uh, soaking damage, getting him low enough so he can horse, and all that good stuff. Next up we have Rose. Uh, Rose is, her gear keeps getting more and more scuffed. Um, I use her uh, in Fire Expedition, so that's why I can't strip her completely. But she is quite useful in slow cleave comps. Uh, she's not quite speed tuned anymore with my flan. She needs to be a bit faster. But other units have required the gear, so kind of shifted resources towards them instead of keeping it on her. I don't really use her all too often in PvP anymore because Ron, Para stuff, they're all way too fast. Um, I used to be a slow cleaver, and it used to be such a fun playstyle, but. It's not really viable anymore. She's on Bastion to help out with uh, the highest attack unit on the team. Um, and of course, decrease skill cooldown here so she can keep turn cycling in Expeditions. All right, uh, Corinne here uh, is on a destruction build. She is for Wyvern. She should have a bit more stats, but she's missing her Daydream Joker. It's currently on Sermia, so not farming Wyvern at the moment. I know, blasphemy, but not farming Wyvern at the moment, so she's not currently geared with her artifact. And here we go, uh, inflicting bleeds on her S3 is also quite nice. Um, but yeah, moving on, we got my Kisei. Now, Kisei got reworked quite a bit here. High damage, uh, high speed, right? So she is quite an insane unit to have. Uh, been really liking her as a speed contester, because I, I abuse speed imprints. I know this isn't fast enough to technically contest much like Ron's and Pira's, but I'm a speed uh, imprint abuser, so that's how we manage. Her ring kind of sucks here. We use it for the crit chance, but it kind of sucks because it only has 12 speed. So we're just missing crit chance on a lot of pieces here. Like things don't roll into crit chance enough, as you can see. So that is why we are lacking uh, the crit that's needed. Otherwise, I can definitely go for a faster ring. We have her on Windrider uh, for the attack bonus, so help her out. I, I need more imprints on her, and if you kill something, she gets an even bigger attack boost uh, for the following turn. 
She is on her uh, EE that um, strips, uh, decreasing duration of buffs by one turn. This helps her a ton into Hua Young because they're usually, uh, they have immunity on them, right? So you strip the immunity, reset the Hua Young skills so you don't have to worry about her. So Kisei is my Hua Young counter, my go to counter for that. Right, we have Mui over here, uh, built for PvE Wyvern. So he's holding a bunch of uh, old reforged leftover gear. Like, look at this. This is a really bad piece, but um, he's just looking at, you know, you're looking at some really old pieces that I used to have that are reforged on random units. They have things like effectiveness and stuff on it. So it is good enough uh, that it works. So there's no need to reforge things like this. He's good enough, right? Daydream Joker as well, um, holding on to that for when I use him in Wyvern. Alright, next up we got Peyra here, slowed her down, she's only 302 speed. Uh, I don't use her all too often in RTA, I've stopped kind of playing the go first style, I'm kind of a turn 2 player uh, in, this, uh, in the past season uh, that we just finished. You guys can probably tell I documented most of my matches uh, in RTA, but... Yeah, overall, she's great for contesting sometimes, um, but I don't pick her regularly. Uh, she's also kind of falling off because DJB really hurts her, <laughs> which is really funny. But that's also one of the reasons I don't pick her, so that if, I'm, if my opponent picks her, I get to use DJB. All right, moving on, we got Ron here, uh, re-geared, actually, for damage. So as you can see here, he's got some uh, damage substats going on. Uh, not too shabby. His crit rate is not 100%, but it's fine. As you can see, it, my gear just does not like rolling crit. Um, so I had to give him this boot, which is one of my better boots out there. Uh, but yeah, he's pretty good at what he does. Now, he is a bit slow. This is all I can manage. I don't really have many fast speed DPS pieces. Um, unless I strip Kisei, but I'm not willing to do that. And he's on Silver Rain for that kind of supporty role. He can snipe really squishy units like Acids and stuff if I speed imprint and I contest and I go first. Um, but this is mostly to help support whatever the follow-up DPS is to help make sure they get uh, the damage that I can use to cleave. Alright, uh, moving on, we got Cerise here. I use her in the Light Expedition, which is currently gone. She keeps getting slower and slower every time you see her, but I have to keep taking gear from her, as you can see, unreforged chest pieces and stuff as well. Um, yeah, I have to keep taking gear from her because she's just... I mean, I only use her in that one expedition. Uh, I'll miscom feel, by the way, to help defense break the bosses and help you ensure more damage. Alright, moving on, we got Flan. Unfortunately, she's kind of falling off in my usage of her in RTA. However, I do use her a ton in Guild Wars. She still has super high effectiveness right there with decent speed. And it is, um, she's usually coupled with Aeola. So I go Aeola, who's holding book, uh, so that Flan can go in Soulburn after Aeola strips. And then you push up your DPS and then you cleave. So it is a very, very uh, efficient Guild War cleave strat. Obviously against units that are not horribly fast. Uh, Unseen Observer to help by applying souls, giving 10 souls so I can soul burn the DPS that comes after her. And uh, yeah, we be cleaving. Alright, next up we have SSB here on a full injury build, as you can see. Um, I do like using her from time to time. She is very fun in Arena to just injury down... Um, my opponents here. She's on an attack necklace for the drink procs. Um, it's also just so that she can get a bit more damage from the um, just from the splash damage overall. Crit damage is fine, but my attack was kind of low at 3200, so I went for the attack route. It's working out pretty decently. Uh, she has bulk here with her ring, and she has an attack boot uh, as well. So, yep, overall. You know, you have to be careful if you're drafting her in RTA. She does work sometimes. You guys have probably uh, seen me use her from time to time against people who pick too many fire units or um, punishing people who don't have enough damage to, to nuke her early. So, she's pretty good. Next up we have Dizzy, the infamous Dizzy that lived with, uh, I forget, like 16 health, 64 health, something like that. Uh, but here we go, immunity, counter set, she's on just kind of random gear that I had laying around, like this stuff is awkward, 
right? So I just put it on Dizzy, why not? And she works, she's 210 speed, pretty good on a counter set with immunity. And uh, yeah, she does what she needs to do. A little bit of effect resist here and there to kind of round things off so that she can't be controlled as easily. And I have her on Abyssal Crown with 100 effectiveness and a bunch of bulk so that she's just very annoying to deal with. All right, next up we have Ida, and Ida here is on a full damage cleave build. So nothing really new here. Um, people have way better Ida's than I do. I just prefer having 10k HP and 1,000 defense because it's aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> um, but no, really, it's a, it's very aesthetically pleasing. Um, we have Taga Hell's Ancient Book here so that she can soul burn S2 into an S3. And of course, if my opponent has Ida, it's 100% stun on all my units. If I have Ida, she stuns maybe one unit if I'm lucky. All right, moving on. Fairy Tail Tenebria is on a weird PVE kind of damagey build. Uh, <laughs> I tried using her in a Wyvern one shot, like for one shot the first wave kind of comp, but it didn't really work out. Um, so she's just kind of sitting on the gear that I had her on, and yeah, time matter, fun stuff, just filler gear uh, on her. Moving on, we got Luluka. Um, Luluka's actually got re-geared recently for Katie's, and I use her in Azimanic as well. So she's on a rage set. I actually managed to get two rage sets. So Luluka with Sermia destroy C13, and Luluka with my um, who's my main DPS in uh, Azimanic? I think it's Landy. Yeah, I think my PVE or uh, PVP Landy is the one I use. She just helps as a secondary DPS and a defense breaker, so pretty good. She's on Aiela Violin to help her strip the buffs on uh, Azimanic. However, if I use her in KD, she does get a plus 30 uh, Daydream Joker um, right there. And yeah, got her on effectiveness here with the chance to attack twice when using her S1, so extra chance to defense break. All right, moving on. A Momo is not really used. We use Angelica though quite a bit. She is my Wyvern tank, so sped her up a little bit with um, speed boots, I believe. This free janky speed boot. She's on full HP set, full tank. That's actually too much bulk. You don't need this much bulk to tank, especially because she heals and everything. But she's pretty good. I actually decreased her bulk by putting a Fectra's ring on her. Um, it. It doesn't help. Sometimes she's still the last one standing if the team gets unlucky and wipes. But yeah. Overall, not too shabby. She's on this, by the way, for the effectiveness uh, to help the Mui. My Mui doesn't have 65 effectiveness. She has like 60 or 61 percent. This helps round it out and, of course, grants additional attack to my uh, other Wyvern units that deal more damage. Now, she's on this EE, not even fully maxed out for speed, but dispels um, a debuff. Not the most important thing, but is the best one out of the three. Alright, moving on, we got Dien, and Dien's the one I re-geared. I think some of you guys have seen her in the sneak peek video. I showed stats at the end, and here, here she is at 269 speed. You get 7 speed in RTA, so she's at 276 speed for the Soul Weaver bonus that um, all the units get. So here are all her stats. She's on kind of offsets. She has a little bit of resist to resist the units that don't really have too much effectiveness. Um, but yeah, overall she works quite well. Rod of Amaryllis to give her healing uh, potential. And she's on the EE that pushes up combat readiness when you use her S2. Okay, uh, moving on, we got Alencia, and she is the infamous Alencia. I've been trying to shoehorn, shoehorn her into every match. You're going to see more matches, by the way, in the coming days of me just trying to use Alencia. But, <laughs> um, yeah, injury set, looking pretty good. The only complaint I have about this build is speed. However, I am working on that, actually. Um, we're going to get a... I have a better chest piece already lined up. I just need a better boot. Um, if I can get boots with some crit chance on it, I can also swap out her helmet. Her helmet has a bunch of crit chance. So I need a better boot than this. This is kind of eh. Right, you can see the rolls didn't really go too well. Um, but if I can get a better helmet, as in, um, I have a better helmet. Sorry, I have like a 21 speed injury helmet with HP, crit damage, and crit chance. It's just that I need a better boot 
to help compensate for the lost crit chance here. Uh, okay, but she is uh, currently on Crimson Seed, so she can cleanse herself. Helps out quite a bit. And I'm on the EE that helps her uh, heal a little bit. It's not a great amount of healing, but it's enough to help sustain her uh, in the long run. You bring her into long bruiser fights and she injury, uh, injuries down the opponents. All right, moving on, we got Lilybat. Uh, she's actually built, she's usable. It looks like she doesn't have a lot of damage, but she's quite insane if you can soul burn her S3. She is on, so like I just can't get better gear for her as of right now. Um, just lacking, lacking the spare gear for her uh, is the problem. As you can see, lacking a ton of speed. I want to make her faster. I need a faster extinction unit, and she'll be perfect. But I just don't have the gear. She's on Sigurd's Scythe because it's a filler piece. Uh, ideally, you'd want her on something like Portrait for the nuke damage at the start. Um, but yeah, uh, increased damage on her S3 for the kill. Uh, moving on, we got Helga that, is, I mean, uh, I used her in that one joke RTA video, right? So I gotta show her stats now. Um, she's originally planned for use in the Ice Expeditions, but it turns out I have slightly better teams to use. She gives herself an effectiveness buff, so she doesn't need a ton of effectiveness to work in Expeditions. Uh, but yeah, she's on complete garbage gear, and she's wearing anti-magic mask, because why not give yourself random buffs? Uh, <laughs> for two turns at the start of the turn. Okay, uh, moving on though, we got Rimuru. Uh, switched up his build a little bit. He's less bulky now. He's a bit more damage, although I do have him on proof to help survive. So here's his stats real quick. Rimuru does Rimuru things. He's on a crit chance necklace. And uh, yeah, he just uh, exists to nuke things. Although I usually typically ban him anyway. Although now I... I'm doing a little less now, a little less, moving forward. Probably at the time of posting, you're like, no, 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 you still ban Rimuru all the time, but in the next week or so, you'll see I start to shift my draft to compensate for opponents using Rimuru, because things like A-Raz and stuff are really good at mitigating him. That's why I've kind of stopped drafting him as well. All right, moving on though, uh, Yufin is supposed to be on a rage set. If you wanna see my rage Yufin that I use for Banshee one shots, check out my old account overview. Uh, she is there, but it will typically be the gear that I currently have on Sermia placed on Yufin. She one shots Banshee, good stuff. Uh, next up we have Zahok, and Zahok here is on some cracked gear, but for some reason I never use him. Uh, he's really good with injury like his injury on his S3, and his resource reset as well. So he's good into violets, he destroys them. I use him in Guild Wars, but it's just so hard to pull him off in RTA. He has actually my fastest speed set ring, so there is that as well. Uh, yeah, so overall, you know, not too bad of a unit. Merciless Glutton, so if you snipe something, you can push up your combat readiness of your teammates, which is pretty good. Um, and yeah, this is the one. Re inflict resource reduction on target by 60%. So resource reduction resets things like... Um, he's good into A-Ravi too. It resets uh, focus and it resets um, whatever the gauge is that A-Ravi uses. Um, but yeah. Fighting spirit, that's what it is. It's, yeah, that thing. Anyway, moving on. We got my uh, Armin here. Actually changed her up a little bit since the crafting video that we've had. But here's my Armin, looking pretty good with that 300 crit damage and a ton of defense and bulk. So managed to pull this off, got the perfect immunity and counter pieces. Uh, I went broke, basically, trying to build Armin, as you can see with my gold up there. And yeah, worth every little bit because she's such a great anti-cleave unit and she's very fun. Uh, her Elbrus here as well. I gave her the better Elbrus, unfortunately. My Charles uh, originally had it, but oh well. And she, um, yeah, increased the chance to counterattack because why not have more chances to counterattack? <laughs> um, but yeah, she's very fun. Highly recommend if you're looking for a fun unit to build. Speaking of Charles, I got the plus 15 Elbrus only, but I changed him up as well. He's on penetration set with counter. So more and more of my units are uh, foregoing immunity, going for counter. Uh, my Charles is still on my Guild War defense team, so he obliterates anything that he hits. 
Unfortunately, though, sometimes he doesn't counter as much because his Elbrus is a lower level. Um, but that's okay. We still have the EE where you go S1 into an S2, so it's a higher chance to proc that. And he's still at a 0.2% crit chance away from 100% crit chance. Because we like living life on the edge. Okay, moving on. Falconer Clurry. Uh, use her in Ice Expeditions. Also use her in... Um, actually, I don't use her in Fire anymore. You could use her in a bunch of Expeditions. I sometimes use her in Guild Wars to um, to provoke Hua Youngs. And the Hua Youngs I face are not typically very fast, so you just use Falconer Clurry, throw a throw the Falcon at Hua Young, and uh, call it a day. <laughs> It just works. I have her on Rise of a Monarch. Um, it helps just, it, it helps like pseudo heal in PvE. I mostly use her in PvE content, as you can tell by the gear. Um, but it helps the pseudo heal in PvE by granting barriers to DPS, who is usually the one that's the lowest HP. So, pretty good. Alright, next up we got Yolha. Um, I don't think I ever debuted her because I built her for Guild War and Arena. But here you guys go, here's my Yolha on speed and HP. Uh, she's 200 something speed, 100 something resist. Uh, 29,000 HP is fantastic for her. 28k is enough if for the most part. Uh, 29k, I've had her survive attack buff, vigor buffed Hua Youngs. And just in case she doesn't, I have a plus 30 holy sacrifice ready to go. So, you know. You delete Yolha, she comes back, and she's going to delete you anyway, um, which is quite nice. The only problem is that after her S3, she's kind of a sitting duck, so that's the unfortunate part. All right, moving on, we got Selene on Speed Penetration set. Uh, great DPS unit, great unit for sniping things. Uh, especially if people have really scuffed Guild War defenses, you can snipe like a soul DPS, like a Landy or Steny that's stealthed. They put him with like Amelia's or, or DN's or something and you can just snipe him with Selene. So it feels pretty good. Uh, but yeah, overall very happy with her build. She has the uh, infamous 1k defense, 10k HP. Secret R Swordstorm maxed out. I remember I bottled this and then I got more copies of it, unfortunately. Um, and yeah, she has the one where she attacks the person with the highest attack. I had her on the one where she stealths before, however, um, there's like, the times you choose her, you're not really gonna be picking her into Hua Young's and Samurai Sirius, right? You're not really gonna get baited by her. Um, people can't really bait her, essentially, right? You're gonna pick her as a last pick when you know she's a solid choice in RTA. So that's why she's there. Okay, uh, Vildred, uh, speed imprint, 4.4k attack, bunch of crit damage, 200 speed, standard stuff. He can push himself up, which is why you don't need a ton of speed on him. Uh, coupled with something like uh, Sashe from my Flitico or Watcher Shuri, and he's pretty much guaranteed to follow up and take the turn, right? Love his outfit, Sword of Summer Twilight to help reduce the, uh, or penetrate the defense and uh, can push up the team even more for turn cycling. He can, uh, <laughs> he can help your team lap quite a bit. So if, you don't, if he doesn't finish the job, somebody else will. Um, and I have the damage increased on Blade Ascent right here for his EE. All right, moving on, Bologna actually using her right now. Uh, revamped her gear, as you can see, she actually has a really insane helmet. Um, don't ask why, it's just no one else is using it. So. Yeah, immunity has fallen off pretty hard, thanks to Rimuru and friends, but she's on a crit chance necklace, uh, makes it, uh, because it has insane stats, but also because it helps, uh, helps me manage the rest of my gear. She needs effectiveness, she needs crit chance, she needs crit damage, a bit of attack, bit of bulk, because she's in PvE, um, but she does quite well. She's on Bloodstone to help heal the team. I use her in A13. I actually did use her, I believe, as well in the last Advent event, maybe? I don't remember. I think I did. Um, but yeah, she's quite useful. She's useful in Raid, Hell Raid, and stuff like that as well. Uh, currently, I have her EE on the Dispel A buff. However, in certain cases, you want her to Defense Break, so I switch her to her other EE that makes her S3 100% chance. Alright, but there we go. 
Next up we have Iceria. I currently don't use her in anything actually, funny enough because I have her on such good gear. Um, but yeah, 250 something speed, 100 effectiveness is good enough for all PvE purposes. And she just kind of does her thing. Uh, this is actually not reforged, although I could do that. Um, but yeah, does her stuff. Uh, Song of the Stars to help put target debuff. She already defense breaks on her S1 and S3, so this helps to increase the damage output. Uh, I had her tested out in Katie's and had her before in Azimanic and had her before in a bunch of expeditions, but she was kind of a little weird. I might, I might actually be using her again in my Ice Expedition, but as of right now I need to work on re-gearing some units for that. Um, but yeah, pretty good unit. Next up we got Landy, uh, user everywhere actually. I revamped mine, she's much faster now. So she has a very scuffed helmet, as you can probably tell, but it gets her to have some decent bulk on her. She's on Guiding Light, uh, she is not on immunity because who needs immunity anymore when there's Rimuru's everywhere? Um, <laughs> you just, I mean, every, every opener has debuffs now, right? So I always bring cleansers. There's no reason to have her on that. Uh, I have crit chance or crit set on her because um, it allows me to push my speed up. So she's 253 speed. I like her fast. She goes, she pushes up the team. The rest of my team goes and uh, she gets the lap quite a bit because she speed buffs herself. She pushes up her own combat readiness. She's an insane unit. So I'm very happy with her build right now. All right, next up we got Rin. Um, surprising stats for my Rin, actually. I don't know, yeah, this. I don't think you guys have seen my Rin uh, after I updated her. So she's on resist set with speed set, almost 200 resist. She's actually pretty resilient. Uh, decent bulk on her, pretty good speed. I think the last time you saw her, she was still on her counter build, um, but this, this piece helps out quite a bit. Um, but yeah, she's very fun as a unit. Uh, love using her. A bit of effectiveness as well because of her um, some of the substats and then some of her EE. Celestine is for the healing and yeah here's the EE on effectiveness. Unfortunately like right they could have given her something better but oh well. She dispels a debuff uh, before she uses her S3 just in case there's unbuffable on things and she can cleanse that. All right, next up we have Rowana. Rowana is actually on a different artifact, but she's on this right now because of um, because of expeditions and because of hunts. So let's go through her gear here. She's pretty tanky. Normally 19,000 HP with 1,900 defense, a little bit of speed, a lot of resist as well. Uh, she's on a counter build so that she can keep procking barriers for the team. She's pretty reliable. Now she's on Idol's Cheer right now because in Katie's she pushes up Sermia with Idol's Cheer. And in the uh, in the team I want to create for Ice Expedition, she will be the frontline tank, so she'll be pushing up the DPS. Um, but normally I would also have her on uh, Stella Harper right here because normally if you're bringing her, you're bringing her to units that counterattack a lot. So those units that counterattack a lot, like SSBs, you have things that follow-up attacks like Solitaria. A lot of those units like Arc Demon and stuff, right? They're all AoE counters. So they're gonna be hitting Rowana and then you have chances to dispel uh, like defense breaks, stuns, um, you know, seals, any of that stuff. So Stella Harpa is pretty good on her. All right, moving on, we got C. Lilius here. And I don't really draft her a lot because people don't like seeing her, but now I think people don't like seeing Hua Young more. Mm, anyway, <laughs> C. Lilius here is just rocking a bit of bulk, bit of speed, bit of effectiveness. Kind of uh, an all-rounder. I don't really use her all that often, to be quite honest with you. Um, I don't. I, I just managed to go without her. Um, in RTA and uh, you know you can manage you can definitely manage she's currently on border coin thinking about swapping this out for um, the Hufin artifact here champions trophy for the more effectiveness and the chance to stun on her s1 seems like good utility um, and I might change this off of her but for right now 
it works, right? It works. She's really good in PvE, by the way. I, I think the most I use her in is Hall of Trials, um, where she outputs an insane amount of damage with a single DPS in the back. All right, next up we have General Purgis, actually built as a bruiser. Look at that. Uh, Golden Boy's Wen. Uh, <laughs> with all the LR crowds I've been pulling, hopefully they, they buff him soon. But anyway... Uh, General Purgus here is mostly for Bellions and mostly for Arena, not so much in RTA, he's harder to pull off in RTA, but punishing AoEs, right, I put like General Purgus, you have uh, Armin, you have Carrot, you know, those types of units that just punish AoEs with counters, General Purgus pushes up the team, I have Midnight Bloom to help with crit chance on Carrot, because I usually couple General Purgus with Carrot, because he's an attack buffer, he helps CR push uh, Carrot for turn cycling, he's really, really good. And I have him on this, which increases combat readiness by an additional 3% whenever he's hit. Although you can use other ones, uh, this is just the one I have, the EE I had when he used to be my Wyvern tank, but he's no more. Um, next up we have my little Queen Charlotte, revamped actually, a bit more attack and a bit more bulk. So she's looking pretty good, and I'll show you why when we get to the right side here. So crit damage necklace with a bunch of attack as a substat and health ring with a bunch of attack as a, a substat. So she hits quite hard and attack boot here as well. On Hellcutter, she's insane. Um, yeah, there's like, I couple her with units like DJB, cleansers to help keep her um, Keep her healthy, and then pushers, right? CR pushers, Flitica and stuff to help her get her turn. And then you just nuke the A-Ravi, and she is no more. I know some people like to go hybrid uh, sets, like they go crit with immunity with pen set. But for me, this just ends up working perfectly in terms of stats that I need. So I don't really miss the other stuff all too much. Alright, moving on, we got Crimson Armin. She's on very scuffed gear, as you can see by her necklace. Um, but... She's still useful sometimes as flat damage mitigation. I have her on effectiveness build because it's funny when she just provoke locks units. So if there's um, like a really annoying soul weaver or something I want to control, um, I just use her. Now her necklace, she had a better necklace, I had to give it to somebody else. Ideally she'd be around 150 effectiveness though. She's running Aurea, she's kind of scuffed. Not really using her all too much right now, but this build was pretty fun when I did use her um, a couple seasons ago. Alright, moving on though, we got Merce as a little... Actually, I did use her in the last advent event as well. Um, she's on lifesteal with crit. She's evasion unit, so basically don't build her and build Violet instead. She is a speed imprint though, which is kind of nice. If you're trying to be anti-cleave and you're trying to speed contest, she is a nice fail safe because she does have evasion, she does have life steal, and she does have a bit of damage. Unfortunately, my Moonlight Dream Blade is only plus 15 because my plus 30 is on somebody else. So there's that. All right, next up we have uh, Spez. So Specimen says here, uh, very fun unit. Unfortunately, though. Don't really get to use them all too much because uh, stunning things is not a thing that is very easy to do with 15%. He is on portrait though, which is quite nice. Um, but yeah, that's just the, your generic little spez. His damage seems low, but if you hit somebody that is stunned, he penetrates their defense by 100%. And uh, they go bye-bye. So, pretty good. Alright, next up we have Spirit Eye Selene. Now, I don't think many of you have seen this build on her. She's Penetration Life Steal, and she's 252 speed. She has decent damage, um, but yeah, mostly speed. It was hard to get crit chance on her, but we somehow managed. Um, overall, I think her pieces could be a bit better. Some of her pieces could roll better, but I like the speed on lifesteal set. It helps her sustain quite a bit. Uh, I have her on Dust Devil for the extra chance to attack again. I need to use her more often in RTA, but people people like to pick a lot of dual attack units, and she doesn't do good against dual attack units. 
All right, next up we have Tempest Surin. She's still built, she still exists. She's on uh, Lex's basket, anti-cleave unit, although the thing with her is that, again, um, you have a lot of AoE units nowadays that can cleave. You have a lot of AoE damage, like up front, like Ron and stuff can just obliterate T Surin um, because you hit her and then, you know, follow up units come and then they hit her again and she's gone. So she's hard to pull off. You can use her though in the right against the right comps. Alexa's basket. If you gab, she goes voom, and then everything disappears. Okay. Uh, next up, we have Flitica. A lot of you guys have been curious about her speed. 292 speed. She has my best piece of speed gear, as you can see. 20 speed here. 26 speed here on a rage helmet. Uh, 22 speed. 17. 20. And of course, a boot. Now. I do want to get a better crit chance necklace. For right now, she's fine, right? There's no complaints about her right now. I just want to get a better necklace. I can, if I can push 20 speed on a crit chance necklace, that'd be insane because I can get 295 speed here and we are going to be looking pretty golden. The only other way I can uh, increase her speed is so I get better speed set pieces, which is probably almost never going to happen. Uh, Sashay though is her artifact of choice, it helps push up the team, so she is very good at setting up for other units because of her S2, pushing combat readiness, so push up the team, you, you go and you obliterate something and then you keep going because Sashay keeps, uh, keeps your moment momentum up. Right next up we have Wander Silk, she got buffed and I instantly built her, she actually doesn't need molas because it's damage, damage, and damage. You don't need the cooldown here. She's not gonna. Battle's not gonna go on that long. You don't really need the effect chance uh, here because you're mostly gonna do S2 and then S. Or sorry, S3 and then S2, and then the battle should be pretty much over. Because if you're speed contesting, uh, the other person's probably cleaving. So mine's on a 273 speed build. It is on pretty high effectiveness actually. Uh, love it when she gets 15 percented. It is fantastic. Um, but yeah. She works. She has a bunch of bulk, because she doesn't need any other stat, and she's pretty good. I have her on Guiding Light, because why not hide behind things? <laughs> People can't snipe her with a single target unit um, if they do manage to outspeed her. And yeah, speed EE right here with the EE that dispels a buff when using her S3, uh, which is pretty good. Next up we have Watcher Shuri for the one-shot kings. Uh, on a bunch of damage, 3200 attack, almost 300 crit damage, uh, 222 speed, running Sashe, so, you know, you nuke something, you push yourself up, and you push the team up. So he's pretty much, if he goes, he's guaranteed to get a kill, so you're guaranteed to get combat readiness push uh, with Sashe, and he is on the EE that grants skill nullifier. Uh, it's actually really nice because he tends to be one of the squishier units on the team, and if you you have two high priority targets, so you can always nuke one and then the other one can't nuke him immediately, like an A Ravi for example, uh, can't just S3 into him immediately and then revive whatever you just nuked. He's really great into Guild War as well, he's actually a decent light bait now in Cleave, right? If you need to nuke other things and then leave the A Ravi for like let's say uh, LQC, then you know A Ravi, if she hits the Watcher Shuri, destroys the skill nullifier, doesn't do any damage to him. All right, moving on, we have uh, Aeola here, and she is used in my uh, cleave comps. So 271 speed is not the best. Oh yeah, here's the helmet for um, Alencia that I'm gonna give her eventually, uh, if I can get better crit chance on my boots. But yeah, uh, Aeola is a fantastic unit for cleave because she can hold book and she dispels two buffs, right? So in Guild Wars, in Arena, if there's slow teams, I pull out the Aeola, debuff, the um, the book helps Flan, which goes next, to Soulburn, defense break everything, push up the team, and uh, there you go. So mine's not a bulky slow Aeola, mine's a faster Aeola, used for cleaving. Uh, I don't really use her in RTA ever, but I probably should because she is very difficult to fight against sometimes. <laughs> Alright, moving on, we have Silverblade Aramintha. So, uh, she is on a pretty decent speed build with a bunch of effectiveness, a little bit of attack, a lot of bulk, as you can see from my substats here. I focus more on bulk. She doesn't need the attack, 
because if you're stunning everything and you're controlling them over and over, you're eventually going to win the game. There's no need to focus on the attack. You normally have another unit like Spez or Carrot or something else on the team that can deal the damage you need, but she's really here for the control, so I prefer the effectiveness over the attack. Uh, she's not Abyssal Crown because when you do your S1 and you do the AoE follow-up attack, it's also really good because then you can just stun things, although that never happens for me because 15% is a curse. All right, next up we have DJB, one of my favorite Soul Weavers this season. A uh, bit of bulk, good speed, and good effect resistance. His speed here would be 255 speed ish in RTA, and his effect res is the reason why his speed is so low. I know a lot of people build speed contest DJBs because he pushes up by 30%, but I like mine with a bunch of effect resistance. Um, so that he can never be controlled, right? He's guaranteed to take the second turn. He'll cut the uh, after the Pera, the Ron, the whatever, right? So it is quite nice. All right, so we can see here uh, he's running Eternus, and the reason why he's running Eternus is because he pushes himself up 14% when an ally has a debuff at the end of the enemy's turn. So, at the end of the enemy's turn is important, because if Para, if Ron, or something like that goes, DJP just pushes himself up, he's guaranteed almost, pretty much, to, to, to be the next unit that goes, right? So, my DJB has been MVP for me in the past season. Alright, moving on though, Magic Scholar Doris, uh, she is MVP in Guild War as a light bait, so she tanks everything dark. Uh, a Ravi's especially, she can tank no problem. Uh, a Ravi sometimes deals triple digit damage to her, not even breaking a thousand damage uh, because of how bulky she is. She gives defense buff, she has CR push, she has cleanse. I have our Wonders Potion Vial because she never really gets hit hard enough because of her bulk. She never gets hit hard enough that she triggers Water's Origin, so this just helps um, keep all of my units cleansed and ready to go whenever um, she takes a turn. All right, moving on, we got Maid Chloe. Um, I need to speed her up. I don't think mine's fast enough. However, I do like the defense that's on her. It makes her pretty resilient. I do want her with more effect res and more speed though, so we'll probably have to make a trade-off somewhere. But with that being said, she was my go-to for the early season, last season, uh, Maid in Dillybet, you guys, I think, recall she was a monster she was great um double cleanse from maid and delibet made it really hard for people to just spam paras and sea lilias and stuff this was before djb got his buff so now djb is now in the mix as well so i have quite a few cleansers built it's nice to have more than two because if your opponent snags a couple or if they pre-ban some you still have a bunch of extras to work with she's on water's origin because she's on the squishier side so she can push herself up um, especially if Ron's go and deal a bunch of damage to her. She can push up, cleanse, and uh, you're good to go. All right, next up we have Ruel of Light. Uh, fantastically tanky Ruel of Light here. 200 speed, thanks to the Soul Weaver buff that has happened uh, recently. Bunch of effect res as well to resist um, as much as she can. And yeah, she's a very strong unit, as long as your opponent doesn't have too much AoE damage. Her weakness is AoE damage. If too many people are hurt at the same time, she's practically worthless. Um, but I have her on Wonder's Potion Vial to help dispel buffs, so she's not forced to use her S2 or S3 just to cleanse things. She can, uh, just by taking turns by turn cycling, she can do that as well. All right, next up we have C. Lorena. She's actually used quite a bit now for me. Um, Daydream Joker should be swapped out with Ancient Sheath if I use her in Expeditions, but if I use her elsewhere, she's on Daydream Joker here. Plus 15 one because she's not that, she's not used in like hunts and stuff. Uh, she's on an attack set with Pen Set, and oh boy does she hit hard. Uh, you can actually use this Lorena right here, this kind of build with the free attack set and just a couple farmed pen set pieces. You can use this for uh, C13. I've actually managed to do it quite consistently. Uh, I just went for an even more consistent team with Sermi and Lulucon Rage Set, but yeah, it works with uh, Lorena. You can put her on Rage Set as well. It's just that I only have two Rage Sets, so she gets an attack set. 
Uh, when she's in Expeditions, I use this against the Dark Expedition, I think. You just replace uh, Daydream Joker because it doesn't work against those bosses. You replace it with Ancient Sheath and you're good to go. Alright, next up we have Dark Corvus, actually geared. Um, 1400 defense, 31,000 HP, 200 speed. Uh, he used to have more effect res, but I actually took his ring off and I gave it to Yoha. But yeah, he still does what he needs to do. And he's still very scary. Strat Gauntlet helps him out quite a bit as well. Yeah, see I'm lacking a lot of effect res here, but I needed that ring for the speed. Um, Strat Gauntlet helps him out quite a bit for with effect resistance, so he's going to be, uh, what, 145 resist? Not too shabby, right? Typical average resist for something like this. Um, I use him a lot in Guild Wars against people who don't have injury units, so if I know, if my guild um, tells me that there's a counter bellion or something like that, you just slap Dark Corvus in there and it's a free match. So it's pretty good. Haven't tried drafting him an RTA, but it would be funny to see how people try to work around him. All right, next up, Designer Lilibet. Um, one of my go-to units, actually. One of my first pick units back then, early in the season, previous season. Uh, kind of dropped off because uh, people started diversifying their drafts. No one's just going Celilius, Peras, like, you know, first picks. Um, it's a lot less para first picks, more C. Lilius first picks, but C. Lilius is kind of awkward to deal with sometimes. Um, overall, she does good damage. She doesn't need immunity because she self cleanses. And uh, yeah, got her defense a bit higher for more crit damage. Also on Draco Plate for more crit damage and uh, for survivability. Overall, no complaints. Uh, next up, I have Great Chief Kawana here. She is still on. Yeah, this is still her build from um, Katie's. Now, I used to use her in Katie's, but that team was abysmally slow. So, swap things out. This build would work if you're trying to do a. If you don't care how long your Katie's runs go, you can just use Great Chief Kawana with something like SSB Rowana and Tamarin, and you're fine. Um, you just put on Daydream Joker. I slapped Durandal on her for the CP for the world boss bonus, but I don't really use her right now. But I slapped the Durandal on her. But you'd want Daydream Joker if you're using her in hunts. And uh, her EE here is to increase damage of her S1 because, again, I'm using her in hunts, so you want the damage, right? All right, moving on. I actually built her brother, uh, Infernal Kawazu. So funny that they're both next to each other right there. Uh, so you can see right here, he's quite good with his attack and his bulk. I wish I had a bit more bulk on him, but I needed the speed. Um, overall, he's very strong and very good in Guild Wars. Uh, punishes people so much by just one-shotting things, right? I have him currently on Indestructible Gators, uh, Huayang's artifact. The problem is this only works if a non-crit uh, hits, and Kawazu can crit, so that is an issue. Um, I want to put him on border coin and then swap C. Lilius's artifact out, but yeah, that's something I need to think about. This works though, if you, because he has like 15% crit, right? So if he doesn't get 15%ed by his own crit stat, then landing an extra burn actually makes the detonate even worse, even harder. Um, and it can one shot things that you normally wouldn't be able to one shot. So it's pretty cool. All right, uh, oh, and his EE here. I'm currently using the one that grants immunity to the caster for two turns, um, for my purposes. The silence one is also really good. The extra CR push is also really good, uh, depending on your situation, right? Silence is good for things like Hua Young's and stuff. You silence her, she can't go. Um, the pushing CE, uh, EE is good if you use him a lot in RTA and you need him to cut, if you have a really fast Kawazu. All right, next up we have uh, ML Ken. So, M.O. Ken here, still rocking his free attack set, free immunity set gear, is kind of dumb, but hey, here we are. It works, right? 20k HP M.O. Ken, um, got some damage, got some effect resist going. He does need a little bit more, I think. Smallgate really needs to show him some actual proper love, but he's on Sigurd Scythe, my plus 31. He's pretty good in Guild Wars into certain comps, but other than that, he's not really used all that much. You can probably trap somebody in draft in RTA though, very rarely. 
Straze is the next, and uh, yeah, he is uh, a monster. I've been using him a little bit in RTA here and there uh, to one-shot people who tank up a lot, uh, a bit too much. People tend to forget that Straze exists because everyone thinks Hua Young is the only one-shot unit in the game. Um, but yeah, Straze, Watcher Shuri, they're both really good. They're both very strong to cleave as well, or in cleave as well. Uh, because of that, I have him on Azur Comet here, so 15% chance, that's why he's at 85 crit rate, and uh, he gets to push himself up when somebody else dies. So if you get Watcher Shuri to go, Vildred to go, something like that, you can push up Straze, and then uh, you get to obliterate stuff. The thing is, Azur Comet works when any unit dies, so if they somehow snipe one of your units, Straze could cut, which is pretty nice. And 225 speed, 224 speed, is nothing to laugh at either. All right, next up we have FCC. So Fallen Cecilia, um, don't really use her much anymore. I did use her a few times last season. Speed and immunity, uh, decent speed. I would like her faster, but it requires taking too much gear off of my other units that I can't afford it. Uh, plus 30 Aureus. She's just kind of a, one of those units that I pick when I don't know what knight to go for and I need a knight on my team for damage mitigation. FCC is one of the best to go for. I like hiding stealth units behind her as well. Landy, Kisei, stuff like that uh, because her barrier is very nice as protection uh, and her skill nullifier. All right, speaking of knights that are very good in generic use, Shadow Knight Pylos here and mine's on counter immunity, pretty good bulk going on, um, and a little bit of effect resist as well. Her passive gives her like 60 or 70 more effect resist when she's above a certain threshold of HP, so she's going to resist quite a bit. Um, into C Lilius's, she's fantastic. Into Bellion's, she's fantastic. Um, I have no complaints about her whatsoever. Her counters proc more than my Armin's counters proc, which is kind of sad, but it's also kind of cool. Pylus is an absolute beast. Um, Aureus on her as well for the damage mitigation, yeah, no complaints, very very strong unit. Uh, speaking of more knights, I have Troublemaker Crozet build, uh, actually. So here's his stats, now he used to be on um, Holy Sacrifice, however, I slapped him on Proof of Valor instead, um, because I had to put Holy Sacrifice on Yolha. I don't want to put Proof on Yolha. Because if you put Proof of Valor on Yolha, she doesn't take enough damage, and she can't nuke things as easily. So, I prefer her to take more damage, so I don't have her on Proof. Alright, but here are his stats. 200-something speed is pretty decent, so a little bit of effect res going on. Uh, overall, not too bad. I do, again, prefer him on Holy Sacrifice, um, but this isn't the worst artifact to have him on. Alright, next up we have Arbiter Vildred. His gear has not changed for like two and a half years or something like that, but here you go. He's uh, he's no longer on my def uh, Guild War defense teams, so I might end up taking his gear for somebody else. Who knows? We'll see. Um, Alexis Basket because Gab Arby is a thing. Alright, next up we have BBK. Uh, one of my go-to cleavers into things with Rem in it because they can't counterattack, so that's cool. Um, bunch of attack, bunch of crit damage, 200 speed, very standard kind of DPS, but she does have, you know, defense and HP because why not have some defense and HP? Uh, she is currently on Shepherd of the Hollow, so helps her with a bit of evasion, but also decrease, uh, increase damage when her HP is lower, so... It helps her because that is literally how her skills uh, scale. Um, where is it? Where is it? Um, bu -bu 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 -bum. Oh yeah, see, as health decreases, attack, defense, and speed increase. So that's why. All right. Uh, next up we have Closer Charles on Lifesteal Immunity Set. Now he boosts himself up, so I have him pretty slow. He still takes turns, easily. Easily takes turns. Um, if you snipe something down with Kisei early, Closer Charles just pushes up, right? Uh, he's really strong. Uh, I have him on kind of a bruisery build, as you can see, almost 12k HP, 1000 defense, and uh, at the expense of a little bit of attack, but he's still very, very powerful. His S1s hit really, really hard. 
Uh, he's on Shepard as well because he's on a lifesteal build, so when he gets low, he deals more damage. You deal more damage, recover more health, and uh, it has a flat 20% evasion, which is um, worth it, right? Especially because Charles gives himself an evasion buff for three turns, so he can uh, dodge things and hopefully survive. All right, next up we have Wanda. Very nice in Guild Wars, so here's her um, imprints and stuff. Here's my Wanda's... Um, uh, stats. Now, most people like to have Wanda faster. I just have my Wanda like this because if I use her in Guild War, she's perfectly fine. You're going to go before no Violets over 200 speed. So you go and you snipe down Violets. She's on Crit Chance Necklace, actually, um, surprisingly enough, uh, with Pen Set and Speed Set. As you can see, I do prefer some bulk on her because sometimes you do get a little unlucky and things happen and she gets attacked. Mostly because she's a dark unit, and uh, Sea Liliuses and stuff are very popular on defense teams. So if you're unlucky, and your uh, Sea Lilius doesn't attack your dark bait for some reason, uh, and they attack Wanda instead, then you need a little bit of bulk to survive. Portrait of the Saviors, though, helps um, with just one-shotting Violets. She does insane damage. Uh, she can one-shot most Rylets. Or Violets. Rylets too, but most Violets. Um, especially with an attack buff. Alright, next up, Briar Witch Isyria here, uh, with her standard build, I believe. I don't think I changed anything on her. Still some, still rocking some of my best gear. She's on a crit chance neck, by the way. Um, yeah, I don't think anything's changed. No, I don't think anything's really changed. Uh, I did give her a couple of imprints, I believe. She's on symbol to help her with the hit chance. She's really good at dealing with violets as well. Um, yeah, I do need to give her more imprints here. I do have a few Iceria sitting around. I just can't decide whether I give it to Summer Iceria or Briar Witch Iceria. We'll see. Alright, next up we have Operator Cigarette. I want to slow her down because she's a little fast. Um, I want to slow her down a little bit for more damage. I think she's in a decent spot now because I have uh, DN built. But before that, I, I was having a hard time getting an attack buff for that point before Cigarette. So with DN built, against slower teams that have barrier units, you can just use Operator Cigarette, and she demolishes things. She's also good into Hua Young, so that's uh, another counter that I have, depending on my opponent's team comps. Because Operator Cigarette's a little less versatile, in my opinion, compared to uh, Kisei, because Kisei has the ability to just stealth, right? I'm running Portrait because I need the extra damage. I feel like my Cigarette's not enough attack. I would love to get more imprints on her attack, and then that would help quite a bit. But for right now, I'm using Portrait. If I can get more imprints on her, I would switch her over to Guiding Light, which is way more safe. All right, next up, Pirate Captain Flan here with uh, bulky stats, some decent attack, and some effectiveness. She actually has imprints because I keep pulling more and more Flans for some reason. Um, but attack, effectiveness, speed, and bulk. That's all you need on her. Uh, and she does very well because she has a built-in kind of SSB Aureus type effect. So she shares damage with the frontline unit. So you don't have to worry about her too much in terms of um, getting sniped too easily. This bulk is good enough. And uh, Star of the Deep Sea, Iceria's artifact. The only problem is, is when it, you know, when you crit, right? You don't want to crit. So this only lands bombs when you don't crit, but she auto detonates with her S1. So if you land a bomb, boom, uh, they cannot resist the stun from the bomb getting detonated and it's over. Okay, uh, we have Arc Demon Shadow next. Uh, some of you guys have been curious about her build here. 1700 defense, 18,000 HP, bit of attack, no crit rate and crit damage. I don't, I feel like it's not important. I know some of the top players have it, but she works for me, ton of damage. Fairy Tale for a Nightmare, doing most of the heavy lifting. A um, little bit of effectiveness to help, you know, push through some of the debuffs, some of the seals. But otherwise, mm, she does everything she needs to, which is stay alive. As long as she stays alive, she'll keep outputting damage with Fairy Tale, and uh, she's gonna be very oppressive. All right, next up we have Oxlots. I use him in uh, Earth. No. The, the ice expedition, right? So just a bunch of filler gear here, run through it. He's just on auto, um, he gets to reset his uh, S2 with Spirit's Breath, as you can see, and he's gonna keep pushing your DPS up over and over and over, and you keep taking turns. 
Ideally, he'd be faster and stuff, but it's a PvE build, and it's an Oxlot, and I don't really have the spear gear for that. Next up, we have Champ Z. Uh, Champ Z is on Aila Violin. He can be swapped to Crown, he can be swapped to Proof, just depending on what you use him in. Uh, he's on Life Steal with Crit Rate right or Crit Set right here. Mine's very bulky. Um, you can also put him on Fairy Tail for a Nightmare. That's actually one of his best ones. The problem is I only have one Fairy Tail, and it's better on Arc Demon. <laughs> it's really rare that I actually draft Champion Zerato because so many units can just take care of him, right? Hua Young's, Rimuru's, LQC's. So it's hard to pull him off in RTA. He can do a lot of work in Guild War though. Um, so that's why I always keep him built. All right, next up we have Spectre Tenebria. I still prefer mine on Lifesteal. As you can see, 11k HP, 1300 defense, almost 4k attack now. My attack used to be around 3400, but we got imprints and she's looking real good. So I prefer Lifesteal because it helps her sustain fights and because people like to pick Bellions into Spectre. Lifesteal Spectre though wins Bellion fights because you can sustain yourself more than she can hurt you. Unless of course their Bellion's like a YOLO Bellion and in which case you get punished. Um, but yeah, I'm one imprint away so I'll be probably hitting yeah 3900 attack pretty soon if I get another copy. Alright, next up we have Singelica here and she is on a PvP build. Um, she's self-imprinted for resistance, and she's on Bastion to help resist as well. She's really good, by the way. 264 speed right now. She's really good into um, C. Lilius in Guild Wars. Uh, especially because you can control AIs, right? So C. Lilius is going to be using her Provoke and stuff into Singelica. And because you're gaining... Uh, what 70 resistance on top of 160 so you're getting so this is a 230 resist Singelica um, is gonna be really hard for a C Lilius most C Lilius have lower resist uh, effectiveness kind of like mine around 100 effectiveness they're gonna have a hard time debuffing your Singelica and then you can just cleanse her debuffs the attack down on everybody and then you give everyone speed buff you give extinction and then you uh, go off to the races Right? So Singelica is a very strong unit. I love having her uh, built fast. Alright, we're going to quickly run over my PvE units here. Now, Tenebria is used in the Earth Expedition. Uh, nothing has changed about her, but just in case you don't want to hop to another video to see what she's like. Um, she's there. Last tea times here to help try to reset her cooldown on her defense break so she can do it more often and reset the cooldown, uh, or sorry, decrease cooldown for this as well. Right, with a bit of effectiveness built in. Right, Mascot Hazel as well. Earth Expedition, as you can see. Uh, speed set, just so she goes before my Meru and everything like that. She's holding a bunch of... I know it's 90 gear, but it's a bunch of filler gear that no one else is using. So a bunch of gear that no one else is using here. Just slapped on her. Bit of effect resist, not too important here. Bit of bulk so she survives. Unfading memories to help heal everyone on the team. Keeps everyone alive, especially because uh, Earth Expo does AoE damage to your teammates. All right, next up we have Terranor Guard on a Unity set. Um, 230 speed. A little bit of crit chance here going on. Bit of crit damage, bit of effectiveness. The reason why is because uh, you use him against the Fire Expedition. So against the Fire Expedition, he is fantastic and uh, he puts in a lot of work. So he defense breaks, if you dual attack he pushes up the team, he gives himself attack buff. Uh, he's overall very versatile, I really want to 6 star him to be honest, he really really deserves it. Uh, but as of right now, keeping my resources for... Uh, another time. A song for everybody is used because it increases more dual attack chance. So as you can see, he's a 9% here. That's another 3% right there. Plus this increases dual attack by 10%. So um, that's what? 10, 9, 3. That's 22% chance to dual attack. So one in every five approximately. Five to four to five hits, right? He's going to be dual attacking. So pretty good. Uh, and I believe that is prob- oh no, sorry, Vi uh, Vivian as well here. Vivian, um, with quite a bit of damage going on with a Warhorn as an artifact for my Banshee one-shot team. 
So all my Banshee support units are level 50. Euphine, Rage Euphine is the only 6 star that I use for that. Uh, got her on Warhorn for the attack for Euphine's one shot, and got this for the clearing the mobs in the uh, first wave. So there we go. Uh, Green Lot's here, actually, level f uh, sorry, 5 star. Uh, he's here because of the Ice Expedition, so he actually helps quite a bit in terms of cycling the team, helping the team uh, heal, and just pushing up as well. Right, He is on Touch of Rekos, so every time he's hit, he heals the team a bit as well. Helps sustain quite a bit. Uh, Free Spiriteria should be on Daydream Joker, plus 30 Daydream Joker. She's on a uh, random assortment of free gear and really weird filler gear, as you can see. Mostly for the effectiveness, uh, so that she gets it, and mostly for the damage, so that she can clear the first wave of mobs along with Vivian. She also needs the effectiveness here so that she can defense break with her, um, with her, uh, what is it, uh, S3 right here, see? So if um, my Shadow Rose gets 15%ed, this Free Spirit Tyria can, can uh, also defense break. So I have two chances of defense break for Euphine to one-shot. Alright, and speaking of which, Shadow Rose is the last unit here that we're going to show, and this is her stats. Uh, the whole Banshee team is speed tuned, so these are um, these are her current uh, stats where she stands. So enough effectiveness to defense break, and that's pretty much it. She shuffles around the team a bit for the first wave of mobs, and she's also holding super duper water gun shooter for the effectiveness for some of the other units, and also attack, 5% attack for the Euphine. But that is gonna do it for the video, guys. Uh, quite a long video, I know. We had a lot of new units, a lot of new builds, but hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully this video has helped you with um, building some of your own projects as well. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe for more Epic 7 content, and leave a comment down below letting me know what I can do to improve. And until next time, take care.